All right, so it's 5.30. We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order for uh, Wednesday, June 3rd, 2020. And uh, first order of business, let's roll right into the uh, annual town meeting. Although Randy, I don't see Randy here yet. Is Randy joining us, David? Uh, I think he is. I haven't seen him yet. All right, well then we'll skip that and we'll go to- uh, was, was school department joining us tonight? Yeah, school's here. We are here. Okay. Oh, hi. Yeah, so we can do the uh, warrant and budget and uh, the, and a couple of other things like that. Um, okay. uh, and uh, hopefully Randy will join us and we'll, we can talk about the logistics. Okay, good <laughs> enough. So let's go ahead and hit the uh, uh, talk about the warrant first. Um, David, it sounded like last night the, the finance committee went through this as well. Finance Committee uh, approved the budget and uh, all the articles, all the money articles. So there are only three more articles for the select board to take action on. Okay. Um, two of them are the budget and the other one is the article for the fund balance transfers, which is a stock article. Okay. So do you want to go through and vote on the uh, three remaining that we have to do, or do you want to review the budget first? Let's do the remaining, but I'd like to know in doing that we have, well, number four is anyway, the uh, balance transfer. So we need to know uh, what those are anyway. Do we have those numbers? Right, so if you turn to page, yep, if we uh, turn to page uh, six, there are, Four cash articles and two borrowing articles. Uh, so the cash articles are we're returning 40,000 to the sewer impact fees. We're returning, uh, I'm sorry, there are three articles for the cash. Uh, we're returning $10,013.70 back to CPA for the Hockenham Cemetery. That's a project that's now completed and they don't need that money. And the Plainville uh, Cemetery project is also completed, and we can return one thousand one hundred and seven dollars and fifty cents back to the Community Preservation Act. Then we have two borrowings uh, projects that are completed: the F five fifty dump truck. We had borrowed a uh, eighty five thousand, but only uh, cost us eighty two four seventy seven sixty five cents. And for the police cruiser, we had uh, set aside. 47,000 for borrowing and we only ended up using 430207. So sweep that money back into the pots from which they came and amend the borrowing authorization so we don't clutter up our chart of accounts. This 30 shows that we voted on this last week, is that true? Um this is four zero zero. Well, by by golly, you're right. I'm my notes didn't keep up with it, so All right. my mistake. All right, so let's move on to the next one then. Okay, so that would be articles eight and nine, which are the general fund budget and the uh, enterprise fund budgets. Last night, the Finance Committee both approved the uh, FY21 budget for both General Fund and the Enterprise Funds. As you know, we, uh, we presented three budgets, one back in February 19th, another one back on uh, April 29th, and the final one just a week or so ago, a couple days ago, actually, based upon changing circumstances with revenue projections and impacts to uh, uh, um, the FY21 budget. Does anybody have any questions on this article or can we get a motion, please? We just talk about the budget for a little bit. I just noticed, I don't know if anybody else has any comments or anything, but I had a couple things I wanted to just ask about. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I was just looking through it. I see that, um, that question I had before about the interests got remedied, so that's good. Um, let me pull up the budget here. I just had a question. 
I just, given everything that's been going on lately with COVID and uh, whatnot, I was just looking at the Board of Health because I think that, you know, that's something we should really be looking at right now. And in the revenue summary, we are estimating that the Board of Health is going to have a projected revenue of $80,000, which would be a, a, almost a $33,000 increase from the last time. But in expenditures, we are cutting their budget to 55,000. So we're actually taking money they're generating and putting it back into the general fund. And I'm just wondering why we're looking at it that way and why we can't necessarily put that difference, roughly $25,000 into their budget. And that might be a loaded question right off the cuff, but um, just something I'm concerned about and want us to, you know, see what we can do to bolster the Board of Health right now. All right. So if you remember, the uh, Board of Health uh, requested two uh, amendments to their budget back in February 1st when we first got that. And let me pull this budget up. Um, they had requested uh, a 50%, a little bit more better than 50% increase to their inspection line uh, because we recognized that we weren't covering all the bases with respect to food inspections in particular. Um, I uh, supported that increase of 50% to that one line. Uh, they also uh, asked for a, a salaried position, a health coordinator, uh, for thirty-three thousand dollars. And back on February nineteenth, I did not support that position, um, even though it may have been a good, good, uh, good investment in the town. There was no information that I could use to justify that position at that time, and then. As things deteriorated in terms of our forecasts, um, there was no room to put that money back, uh, that position back. And again, there was no real um, information to support that, that position. Uh, other people were asking for additional uh, positions, and I did not fund those either. Was it anything that the finance committee discussed at all? We, we discussed the, uh, and, and we looked at the inspections and, and that's where we really talked about it mostly. And we agreed um, and, and the inspections stayed increased. We didn't um, try to bring that lower and it was going to affect the revenue side. So we thought that would be a good move. We do understand a lot's going on with the COVID-19 um, and a lot of people have jumped in to help out, um, I think a lot between the schools and maybe the, the nurse and, and also, um, fire department. So there's been a lot of people jumping in on that. So I think, um, and we just need to keep it as, as, um, as slim as we can, because we don't know where the revenues are going. So, yeah. I, yeah, two other comments. We had to cut the lion's share of a million and a half out of this budget based upon what was originally submitted on February 1st from the departments. Um, there are gonna, There is pain out there. I can't deny that. There's a lot not to like about this budget. Um, perhaps if things uh, improve, we can uh, uh, look at uh, this position again at the fall town meeting. In terms of the money uh, coming in, that by law goes to the general fund. It doesn't go to the department. Um, and uh, so we can we could talk about costs offsetting um, expenditures, but that money does not go back to that uh, that department for their use. And don't you think, though, for the Board of Health, that there might be there might be some money coming in from federal um, uh, which we don't know about yet. If we apply for it, it could it could very well happen. Probably state um, or federal, I would think. 
Yeah, there may be some funding out there. I'm not aware of anything right now. And Well, I think you have to show that there's been a deficit. And I think right now, I think at our last meeting, didn't we all agree just to uh, kind of keep things at an even keel and level funded right now at this time um, to get us through this, uh, this time period where we're short in a lot of different departments? I thought we all agreed on that last meeting. Yeah, I thought we voted on it. And if it's an emergency, then they can deficit spend in, within their department and then we'll take it up at fall town meeting. I thought that's what we agreed upon too. Am, are we wrong? Anybody else want to chime in on that? Christian, no, did we correct. Christian, did we agree to that? We did vote on that, correct. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm I'm fine. I just you know, wanted to mention that um, because I think that that's going to be something that's important, you know, moving forward. And I just think that we should almost even consider moving the board of health from series 500 in the budget, which is human services up to series 200, which would be more public safety. Um, it seems like that might be more relevant for today, but um, yeah, no, I just wanted to, to discuss it real quick. Um, had that question and uh, that's good. I'm, I'm good. I just wanted to raise it. I just want to. I just want to chime in on that for a second. Uh, our public safety is not elected officials. Our public safety is an entity unto itself. Whereas the board of health really does belong in 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 service in in health uh, to the community. So I think you know and they're all elected officials. So um, I think that needs to just stay where it is. I I. I think they're in the right place that they should be. They don't belong under public safety. They work in conjunction uh, with like the building inspector and the fire uh, inspector on a lot of these things that they're doing because they do all do inspections, um, but not necessarily to the board of health uh, extent actually. Yeah, I wasn't thinking of the elected official uh, perspective. So yeah, thank you Joyce for that. Okay, thank you. So can we hear from the finance committee? Well, what are your thoughts on this budget? I know you guys have worked hard on it. And so I'll maybe we'll give you a chance to kind of make some comments before we say yes or no. I know you guys have met and spent a lot of time going through this and revising and revising. But, David, uh, David, can the finance committee or David um, give me some numbers on what we have in uh, free cash? And is that available right now for... Uh, for what we're we're dealing with right now, free cash stabilization, water sewer. Do we have all of that available for tonight, or is that something I should have seen somewhere? Yeah, we we have that information. Uh, we have certified free cash is uh, nine hundred seventy-two thousand nine ninety-two. So okay. 975, call 976 to rounding up. Um, your water reserves are a million three. Wait, don't uh, go so your... Wait a minute, a million three, water reserve. Okay. Right. Sewer. Water, res water reserve is about a million three. Uh, sewer reserves is about uh, 3.3 thousand. So let me say that again, 330,000. 330,000. Okay, that's different. Thank you. Okay. And then 219,000 for Hadley Media Reserve. Hadley Media. Okay. And then about 1.7 million for stabilization. Okay. Um, Okay, that covers that. What about um, what's in CPA? In CPA, mm -hmm. uh, before they start spending in the articles presented before you, they have about a million seven, I think. Okay. And do we know what possibly the school committee has in the, um, their stabilization? Annie would have that yeah, sure. Uh, we have not um, identified exactly where we'll be at the end of the year. We do know, so I can get you that figure. Um, we have, we know right now, as of our last revolving account, 
uh, it was nine, I believe it was 972,000 uh, that was in the packet for school committee. So I believe it's 972,000. And there may be uh, more of that that we're applying to this year's budget. We'll, um, we'll determine that uh, in short order. Okay, thank you. Just a rough number. Thanks, Annie. We also have applied to budgeted for FY21 currently, $750,000 of school choice funding um, applied as revenue to FY21. Okay, thank you very much. Amy, do you guys want to comment on the budget and your thoughts? Sure. Okay, so uh, being the third time around, uh, we, after reviewing the budget last night, we did pass it, uh, we, uh, it because it is balanced. Um, we still have some concerns. Uh, you know, it's we, we may have tried to get it a little slimmer, but, you know, we can't, it, it, there's too many unknowns. So that's the problem. So many unknowns. Um, so, but we're happy with where it is. Um, so we would like to, uh, we voted to pass. Um, there are a few items that, you know, there's some, some discretionary stuff out there for the departments. And I really hope the department heads is what I'd like to see the department heads is really if those discretionary items, if they don't need it this year, hold them a little bit until the, hold on to them. Um, and not spend them, and then they would go to free cash. It wouldn't be, a lot of times I think uh, department heads might spend something because they would say, well, if I don't spend it, they're going to take it away from me the next year. No one would ever look at uh, this year being a COVID-19 year and compare this year at all. So I think that um, if at all, and the department heads could hold tight on some of these items, that would be great. So they're in their budget, but just because it's in the budget doesn't need need mean it needs to be spent. Such as like things like, I mean, we did budget some of the stuff, the tree, the tree budget that we talked about before last meeting uh, is in there for 24,000. Um, if it's not used, if there's an emergency, it's used, okay. But if it's not used, it'll go to free cash, which will be great because we would, you know, next year we could be in a lot of trouble too. So it's not, this is not just for this year. We need to look down the future because we think that this might go on for more than just this year. So the free cash will be important to us. The other thing is um, uh, we, there are some people that are volunteering at, at this, at this time, which is fabulous such as we got um, word of someone that, that is very qualified for to help out with HR that said that they would do it pro bono. So um, I'm go we're gonna give that name to David. So um, it was great. Um, you know, people know other people. Uh, Jane knew this gentleman, it was a, a, great, a great person and he just wants to help out the town. So we, we do see some people volunteering. So if we don't need to use money and people want to volunteer, this is a fabulous thing. We're all going to try to do this together. So um, bottom line is we're we're happy with the budget. We're going to go through. We passed everything. And um, we're just going to you know keep monitoring it as we go. Does anybody else want to uh, speak? Uh, maybe Alexi or, or Dylan or anyone would like to chime in? The only part of the budget um, that I had to really question uh, was the spending on converting the uh, library into office uh, building, but it seemed like that was the town's choice for where to put our meager resources. Uh, I think there's enough room there for one project, so I guess that's the project. That's a CPA project, though, correct? Yeah, um, I just think of it all as town resources. Uh, but it's good. It's yeah, I agree, Christian. That's, that's you know, that's kind of good money that's sitting there that can be used, which I think is important. That is not going to actually come from our um, working budget, and I think that is something that you know, it's feasible and it's something that the town can use. So if we can, you know, tap the CPA for these kind of things, I think that's a, I think that's a good thing. 
Um, I'll ask the finance committee, David, and I see Dan and Sue are here as well, but uh, where does this put us as far as residents' tax bills? What, what are our projections looking like? Well, right now we're still looking at a uh, decrease of the um, tax rate. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of, there are a lot of variables and I know that I keep on saying that, but based upon everything that I can read on the tea leaves right now, it looks like the tax rate is going to decrease maybe 20 cents per thousand. Uh, in terms of tax bills, um, not entirely sure yet. Uh, if the values continue to, to raise, rise as they are, then the tax bill might go up a bit. Uh, we are going to be meeting with the financial management team this summer to talk about a split tax rate, which would both reduce the residential tax rate and the tax bill and raise the tax rate and tax bill for the commercial um, development. So uh, lots of things to talk about. Mm, that's treading um, bad water. And yeah, normally I'm all for exploring that, but I don't think this is the mm. year just because of what the businesses are going through. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that one. But, yeah, uh, and a lot of the big boxes are going for bankruptcy protection right now. Uh, I just, yeah. I, I think we're shooting ourselves in a foot. I agree. Yeah. I think we should not change the tax rate this year. It's They've suffered too much already. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Dan or Sue, did you? No, even anything? even at some point, talk to the assessors and put off the revaluation. Even. Yeah, I like that idea too. Dan, did you have anything? Uh, we're looking at probably a five percent increase in values this year. That's going to amount to about a hundred twenty-five dollar increase for the average household. Based do we on have the budget. to? Do we have to do that? Uh if you don't go up to two and a half percent, you got to cut 300 grand out of the budget tonight. And just to, to be clear, we can, we can uh, make an adjustment at the uh, special town meeting before the tax rate is set. Is that correct? Right. You could adjust the budget like you would in a normal year at the fall town meeting. Okay. All right. Well, my my feelings are that we we do need to adjust it. Um, you know, like I said from the beginning, I like to see people paying the same or less based on what's going on this year. Um, this isn't the year to be spending for the the wish list for the various departments, but that's just no. my that's for sure. So, can I just ask a quick question? Because now, after I was given these numbers, you know, I'm old, so take that into consideration. Okay, um, the uh, $972,000 that's in free cash. Has that already not with what we're spending or is what we're spending? Can you just clarify that for me? That's your starting place. Um, Before we so go to town meeting. Let me, yeah, so when we go to town meeting, that's our starting place. Uh, where's the free cash spending plan? Um, okay. That's just what I needed to know. That's the starting so we're, point. We're spending, we're, yeah, we're spending something on the order of 700000 of that for um, recurring and non-recurring expenses within the FY21 budget. We okay. should be able to put away a surplus of 211000 and change, which is part of our long-term strategy and goes back to what Amy was saying that, that we may be in this for the long haul. So we need to reinforce our yeah. reserves as much as possible. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to see what I knew it was a starting, but I didn't know. I just wanted those other two numbers. Thank you. So basically yeah. it's pretty close. If we don't go up to that 330,000, if we kept the tax rate the same. Mm -hmm. Dan, do you Dan? Sedomic. Uh yeah, I mean you could if you don't want to cut the budget, you could utilize free cash or stabilization to keep the average tax bill the same. But in order to keep it the same, we do need to find three hundred thousand dollars in additional savings. Well you just said it was just two hundred and ninety. 
in in that balance for after we spend everything right now. So two eleven, two eleven, John. Or, uh, two, two eleven. I'm sorry. Yeah, two eleven, and we need three thirty. You're gonna you're gonna need the future years. Uh, you're you're gonna need to put that into stabilization and put that away for future years because you're gonna be drawing down on stabilization. So whatever surpluses you can generate now, if you can sock that away, that's going to keep your stabilization at approximately where it is right now in the future. And I'm thinking three, four years down the line. So you're looking at, you're, you're looking at putting that 211 in stabilization? Yes. Oh, and then I just wanted to say too that you know I, I don't want to complain because our budget in 2020 was roughly 21 to 21.8 million. This budget's 21.9. Um, you know, David and the team have cut over a million dollars out of what's been requested. I think we've yep. really trimmed this budget down quite a bit. And given that there's contracted increases in salaries, cost of living for employees, I mean, this, this budget has been trimmed down. It's, if you do some rough calculations, it's not like it's a, been an easy budget to pass and, and put no. through all the departments are, are feeling the pain of this budget. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I do have to acknowledge everyone for their work getting it to where it is now yeah i yeah, agree just, just to amplify a little bit um my projected free cash next year is not in the 900 level uh, thousand uh, not 900,000 um area but 300,000 so you, we need to do whatever we can to sock away money in order to make up for that projected shortfall in in free cash in FY22. So that's the reason why we're, we're putting surpluses away now and we have a plan to put away surpluses in the fall town meeting so that you, you have the, so that you have the uh, ability to uh, um, fund a budget in FY22 without having to think about overrides or further cuts to the budget. But you can't take money you can't take money out of stabilization to uh, uh, do salaries and things like that. That's not what stabilization is for. You you can you can legally do that. You may not want to do that. And again, well, that I'm, I'm I'm asking that we put away free cash now, so that we don't have to spend the original amount of stabilization until the very last um, resort. Is there another uh, avenue to take that 211 and actually not tie it up into stabilization, but to put it into a different account? Uh, that could even go into reserves without us touching it, and just being there in case you needed it. And then you wouldn't have to go to town meeting to touch it. Dude, you never know what's going to come up during the year. Isn't there the finance committee's uh, reserve or account that Amy had mentioned? Yeah, we talked about that a little bit, and uh, David just thought it might be we would still be able to get to it. Um, but the the finance reserve is only seventy five thousand dollars that we have in there right now. That's not very much for this type of uh, what's happening now in in uh, in well, for to me, dollar budget. To Amy, tell me if you if you're the finance person more hell more than I am. Um, the two hundred eleven instead of putting it into stabilization where we did have to go to town meeting to get it out of stabilization. Uh, wouldn't it be on our best interest to put that into uh, the reserve fund? Just, you know, you can't touch that 211 unless it's deemed necessary by finance and select board. And it would be someplace that would be accessible if we did need it. My, my concern with that is, is that come July, uh, June 30th, 2021, whatever is uh -huh. left over in the, in the finance reserve fund is going to go down to zero. Um, if you put it into stabilization, you've protected it. Uh, that money is there forever until town meeting says by a two thirds majority vote to use it. 
Uh, why do you why do you think, David, that it's going to go down to zero if we put it into reserve? It, every every account goes down to zero on June thirtieth of every year. So why that? couldn't we on June twenty ninth move it into stabilization if we haven't needed it? Um, you would have to hold a town meeting in order to do that. Well, we're going to have a town meeting in the spring. That money could, whatever was left, could go into stabilization at that time. Well, free cash also goes down to zero on June 30th. Right. So you're in a situation where you have $211,000 that are going to go down to zero in three weeks' time. If you put it into stabilization, you've protected it. You've set it aside according to your plan, your long-range plan and it's available next year when you need it, um, when you have only 300,000 of free cash, um, you can supplement that with 211,000 of stabilization without uh, touching your original stabilization amount. Uh, so even now, this even though we're doing the uh, 21 budget, that 211 would automatically go down to zero. Correct. Okay, I understand that now. I thought if we put it into this budget for now, it's not it's available to us starting July first. Uh, no, it's not. It, that's the only way to do that is to put it into a stabilization account. Okay. So I have a different question. Pardon, pardon my comprehension. I heard someone say that the tax rate might go down by twenty cents. If the tax rate goes down by 20 cents, rather than maintaining its current rate, where, how does that get figured? The, the rate would drop because values are going up and we're limited on how much we can take in in, in taxes. So because the values went up, the rate has to drop. Is, is there a way to maintain the rate and not have the values go as high? So that the in a year, if the rate has dropped, then if we have to increase it, it's more painful than having it maintain a steady rate. Uh, leaving the values where they are will cause some issues with the OR when they certify our, our values in the fall. And if the values go up and the rate drops versus the value staying the same and the rate stays the same, the average tax bill, the average tax bill will still be the same. Okay. So it, it if the values go up by 5% and the rate drops, the average <laughs> value, uh, if you, you include that 300,000 or 293 of allowed under two and a half, the value would, would end up being the same amount. It's just that the, the, the tax rate would be higher. The taxpayer is paying less. Uh, if you if you dis if you don't raise the two ninety three allowed under two and a half, the taxpayers will pay less. Yes. But if you do raise the two ninety three that's allowed, and I think at this point we should try to without changing can, anything. Which computers I can go on that? Uh, like the tax rates. Huh? Maintain stability. The, the the rate is just a mathematical function of value and our total levy. The only way to really see a decrease is to decrease the total amount that we raise through taxes. Okay, thank you. Jane, are you um, are you wanting to see people pay less or the same, or what, what's your what's your? I feel? would like to see them pay the same. I mean, everybody would love to pay less, but we're not really in a position right now to have people, and my concern is if they pay less this year and next year we're in deeper water, then getting out is going to make them have a larger increase. Yeah. Or we I'm, need, or we need to cut more. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. If we can find a way to cut that 293,000 by the time the rates set, so people are paying the exact same amount, I think that would be ideal. And then we can, you know, tackle this again next year, but. 
I think we have to remember too that the tax rate doesn't get set until the fall. So maybe at the fall town meeting, we can look at the numbers, see where you know we'll have uh, hopefully six months of of time between now and then to kind of get a feel for where we're at and where everything is at and evaluate it at that time. I think I think so too. You know, for the tax rate, that that's when we will set the tax rate. Okay. Any, I, I see what you guys mean. I just am afraid of moving too much now that will make it very difficult in the future, you know, because we do have to think mm. about future times too, as much as we have to Over think. Over the last five years, Christian, we've advanced way too much. We created a million dollar DPW. I keep saying this and nobody keeps listening. We created a million dollar fire department. We're paying for this ambulance service now, which we're getting a little return on, not as much as I believe you say we are, and, and this is where we're at. We're, we're, we got a good good chunk of change back from that ambulance service, John. All we together did. over the last five to seven years, we've progressed so much that we can't afford it right now. Well, I think if we stay status quo, like we talked about two weeks <laughs> ago, I think that's important. You know, we've added important people in into our positions. We, in adding the HR director, which was needed, we don't certainly don't want to go backwards on this. So we need to stay status quo at this point. Any final comments before we uh, get a motion? Just one question for David Nixon. Uh, you said that two hundred eleven thousand is going to get transferred to stabilization but just that isn't shown in the budget do we need to show that it kind of looks like we're just that's left over or is it implied that goes to stabilization that has to be voted on it does indeed and if you look at uh, where where did my warrant go it's part of the warrant okay that's fine if it's in the town meeting probably, warrant. In, the, probably in the trash david look in that basket <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, somewhere around, somewhere around here, I have a warrant. Uh, it's a warrant article. So we're putting of the two eleven, we're putting twenty five thousand into uh, the unemployment trust, and the remainder, which is um, call it uh, one eighty, is going into stabilization. Okay, and I can make a motion to approve. Up, oh, uh oh, warrant article. <laughs> Uh, eight for the general budget. I'll second. I'll second. That. All right. A motion to second. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So uh, then, David, uh, Article 9, did we need to vote on that one as well? So sewer, water, and Hadley Media. Can make a motion to approve Article 9, the Enterprise Fund budget. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor of Article 9? Aye. 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 Congratulations, you have a warrant. Yahoo. Thank you, the Finance Committee, for all their work on it. And David, as well. Um, let's move on to uh, annual town meeting. Uh, I see Randy's here. So, um, uh, Randy, you want to talk about some of the preparations for annual town meeting? Are we still planning on the 20th uh, daytime weekend meeting at this point? Yes, we are. Uh, I'm trying to get together with Mike Spanknable. We were supposed to meet yesterday, but his schedule got busy and today it was busy. So sometime tomorrow or Friday, we're going to Hopkins to take a look at the situation there. Uh, and I think he's got a pretty good handle on how to organize things. So we just have to hope for good weather and uh, everybody that comes will hopefully understand the uh, restrictions that are going to be imposed as far as the social distancing and wearing of masks, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so I think as long as we have good weather, we can pull this off. And what if we don't have good weather? Well, what, what, when did when did it all sudden change? I didn't get no memo saying it was changing from Thursday to Saturday. It was in it was in uh, it was talked about, but there was nothing settled about it. When did that change? 
Well, that became an imperative when we ran out of time for voter registration. So uh, now we're, we're talking to the earliest that we can have it would be on the 20th. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, well, it's going to be good luck one way or the other, Joyce. But we, we definitely have to have it outside. Uh, so what we're going to do, are you, have you put a, you're going to put a rain date on the warrant, David? Nixon? I'm not. I'm going to allow you to uh, uh, make that determination as we get closer. So, uh, okay. So, well, anyhow, somehow we just need to make the voters aware that if it does rain, we are going to reschedule it as soon as we can. Obviously, we have to, we have it scheduled for the 20th. We have to open the meeting and then postpone it till whatever day is going to be appropriate, depending upon the weather. So that's, I'm not concerned about that handle that we don't need a we don't need a quorum for that to postpone it it's like if we didn't have a quorum to postpone right. it right when we we I'm sure we wouldn't get a quorum if it's raining so yeah that's what we'll isn't do. isn't it the case that the governor has said that we can use a 10 percent of our regular quorum for annual town meetings during covid we can change it up down to what we is it a total of 10 percent or 10 percent down david nixon i don't recall what the a total of 10%, so 10 people. Okay. So finance, so, finance committee and select board takes your 10 people for your vote. Yeah, but I don't Most think we have a town meeting that does that, Jane. That's not going to be, that's not going to go over well, and I'm not going to be happy with conducting a meeting with 10 people. That's not fair to everybody. No, uh, I'm no just absolutely not. I agree with that, but I'm just saying that that's what you would need to have the quorum to vote to change it to a oh, different day because we're having a thunderstorm. Yeah, well, if we don't have a quorum, we're gonna, we, we just carry forth like we didn't have a quorum. We couldn't have the meeting in the first place, so we have to reschedule. Okay. 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 Um, David Nixon, do we, I asked you this question before, I don't know if you know the answer yet. Up until when do we have time to change the quorum requirement? Do we have to do that a week in advance of a meeting, two minutes before the meeting? Um, I think you can do it at that meeting, uh, but you can't vote on most of the articles. Right. Um, Department of Revenue tricks what you can vote on. Uh, it is unclear to me that you'll have revolving funds, Chapter 90 program, uh, whether you can accept and expend grants and gifts. I mean, there's a lot of damage that would be done if you had to restrict yourself to 10 voters. I definitely don't want to do that. Uh, I just don't want to be have 98 and then say, okay, we can't do this. Uh, so, but if we had, if we had 98 with the scenar scenario, you just talked about still play out in that we couldn't vote on various things. Can we just do 50 Randy and hope that more than that will come? Well, it depends on what D David just said, Joyce, if we can't vote on three quarters of the, articles in the warrant, it doesn't make any sense to me to do that. Even with 50 people? Well, that's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to get that question answered. Do you know the answer to that, David Nixon? I think that the schools would be very unhappy because their athletic field project would not be uh, authorized. But I mean, if we, if we reduce the quorum at all, does that put us in that position you're talking about where we can't vote on the various things you just discussed? Yes, indeed. Okay, fine. I get it. So we want we need a quorum, which is a hundred people. So we need people. Hundred people, up. right? Are people? I forgot the layout, but are people encouraged to bring their own uh, chairs and that kind of thing to sit in, or are we yes. having chairs set up? I would think we'd want to have chair people bring their own chairs. Well, I, my opinion is tell them to bring their own chairs. If they don't, then we should have stuff available there just in case, as the same will be with masks. They should bring their own masks. They all that's have them. They should, that's true, but we, we need to have some available just in case. I think that we could include directions for how to function at town meeting at the public forum on the 11th, and that would be a good opportunity to explain everything to the voters then. Yes, good idea. And Part of the reason that we talked about uh, and we're doing an earlier meeting is so we can do this in the daylight and get this done because if we did this at a typical time, uh, it'd be dark out and we couldn't really do that out in the field. So I know 
that's going to be a question is why is this at 10 a.m.? So what, t- what time did you all pick? 10 a.m. So if we're, we tell people at the forum, I think it would also be we're in the neighborhood that information Floyd lost in the his newspaper. Life. In Miguel Marcus in Minneapolis, Minnesota. In Atlanta, Georgia, in Los Angeles, New York City, in Washington, D.C. I mean, things like bring your chair, bring your mask, et cetera. Bring your person, please. Yeah. Bring a friend. No dogs. Will we be meeting uh, before the town meeting like we usually do? It would be a little more difficult this year. Well, if the, if the weather's decent, we can do it outside. I think it's probably a good idea just for any last minute concerns. Can, can um, we have a Zoom meeting before? For just with no. the board and the finance committee? As, I long, think- as long as you have your masks on, you can meet in a group to 10 to 12 people, you, if, as long as your masks are on. Can we plan for a uh, 9 a.m. Uh, finance select board and moderator meetup before? Yep. Yes, fine with me. Okay. Fly in from Salisbury at that time. All right, we'll watch you fly over. Parachute <laughs> out. I'm gonna have David come pick me up for Christ's sakes. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, everybody's got a pretty good sized camper. Maybe we can bring the campers and have a little bit of coverage for us, you know. Yeah, yeah, nice. Want me to bring mine back home? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> well, we'll be we'll be fine. We'll figure something out, even Maybe if you get we'll make it work. And but yeah, we'll make yes. it work. So the oldest parliament in the world is over a thousand years old, and they hold their annual town meeting on July 5th outdoors every year. So we can do it mm-hmm. once if they can do it a thousand times. Right. And the other the other thing about doing it in the morning is the, the black flies are becoming horrendous right now. So in anything in the evening is gonna be miserable. So I think we're, our best shot is ten o'clock. Be relatively I think, cool. I th- no I bugs. Think those- I think those black flies got mixed up because they're supposed to be in May, not in June. Yeah, well, everything's a little mixed up this year. <laughs> For sure. Uh, David, are we all set? Do we need any motions or votes on anything? Or are we, uh, we good to move on? So, so I just want to do a check-in with the school department on the their IT article. Yes. So um, as I said, and I said 972, but at the last school committee meeting, the um, school choice revolving uh, was at 942, roughly $942,000. We have budgeted in, sorry, just one second. Hey, Tom, it's, um, Tom, the microphone's on here. Sorry. Um, so uh, we have um, budgeted $750,000 of school choice funding to be applied to the FY21 budget. We also um, will utilize um, school choice funds for our technology purchase. So we'll rescind the tech article. So we've, uh, and, um, and then we will still have school choice available, even given what we're budgeting for FY21. Our hope is that we would still have it with, uh, within our policy parameters and be able to meet all the requirements of CDC um, for re-entry. We're waiting for that guidance from the Commissioner, we anticipate receiving that the week of June 15th. Um, But so we'll, we, um, we will uh, rescind the tech article. So the motion would be uh, to um, uh, sign the warrant and authorize its posting as amended and um, to set the annual town meeting date for set Saturday, June 20th at 10 a.m. at Hopkins Academy. So moved. Second. All right, motion and second. Any further discussion? I just have one other question is uh, the public forum. When is that? What are we thinking? Thursday the 11th at 7 p.m. Thursday the 11th at 7. Okay. And it's going to be via Zoom with question and answers, correct? Correct. Okay. Just an FYI, that's also sixth grade celebration. So um, that will factor into uh, when I can be there and when I when I can't be there. 
What what time does that start and end? Uh, I should know, David. I don't know off the it top of my head. Uh, it starts at six thirty no. since my son is in that. Yeah, that's uh, why. I was thank you. Because uh, that yeah. could be a little bit of an overlap there, but that's so it's on the the eleventh is the eleventh is a Wednesday, correct? No, it's well, a Thursday. Thursday. It's a Thursday. Okay. Can can we move it to the Wednesday? Does that work for everybody? So we're not conflicting with the. Uh... Yeah, I won't be here on the eleventh. All right, so we can move it. The tenth does work better for me. All right, All right. Is that fine, everyone. Let's move it to the tenth at seven p.m. Randy, are you okay with that? Fine. We're talking next week. Yep. Yes. Correct. Okay. That sounds good. Did we say seven p.m.? Yes. And I'll uh, prepare some slides and uh, circulate them around. Slideshow from David. If we're going to zoom it, you don't want to do it a little bit earlier? Six rather than seven? Or? I know. Let, let I people eat dinner. Yeah, we're waiting for people to get out of work and dinner. So Work? <laughs> You're funny. All right, so we got a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Congratulations. I may have missed it, but did you, did the select board vote on Article 12? I know you did 8 and 9. I just didn't know if you did 12. We did 12 last time. Which one was that? 12 was the, I just didn't hear it was said. And 12 is the one that says um, the transfers for the 25000 to the Unemployment Trust Fund and the 180000 to the stabilization. So I just didn't hear you say that, and I didn't want it to be missed. Oh, yeah. I think we did it last last week. I don't, it doesn't, it's not on there that we're, it says pending. Yeah. Oh. We could, we could do, I can just make a motion real quick to approve Article 12. You get a second? Yeah, a second. Right. Any further discussion on 12? Did we lose Joyce? I'm here. Oh, she is. Okay. All, right. All those in favor of Article 12? Aye. 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 All right. Joyce, you there? Okay. All right, so if we're all set, let's move on to public comments. Anybody have any public comments tonight? Uh, I guess I'll start. Uh, Tom Waskevitz contacted me about the uh, proclamation, and uh, I've had four calls ready on the uh, transfer station. We need to speak about or decide what we're going to do here with them. So I sent uh, um, the proclamation this morning. Jennifer scanned it to me. So he, I think he's all okay. set. But um, yeah, the, the transfer station, I got a couple calls about that as well with cutting off Monday service. So people aren't very happy. Um, but I think we're, we're kind of stuck with that at this point, Jennifer, right? Based on it was either raise fees or cut the date. Uh, cut a day of service and uh, it looks like they cut a day of service to keep the fees stable and and to be clear they wanted to raise the fees and cut a day so we've met in the middle with them um because they they wanted to do both but we talked them down to just just cutting the day and they did a poll and they found that monday was the least popular day of all the days is is their contract up uh december 31st or june 30th next year I have to be honest, I have to go and review it. Um, I've just been a little uh, swamped and we don't have a recycling coordinator. So a lot of this has just been sort of falling my way, but I will pull the contract out, read over it, and I'll email the select board with that information tomorrow. Yeah, well, we you know, really need to get look in July, typically when you have to renew the, the permit there. So I don't know if that's any indication that it's June 30th or something that their their service expires. Okay. But, I believe it might be a multi-year contract. All right. Well, we, we definitely need to look into something for, for next year, see what the options are. Maybe we have the best bet now, but let's take a look at it and see what we can figure out. 
I also had a couple of calls and, and the request was that the current people that are there are not nearly as helpful as the people that used to be there. And can we encourage them, especially for seniors, to when they see somebody struggling with a load of trash to offer to help instead of having somebody have to go and find them and say, could you please help me? And the person always comes if you ask, but in the past, it's obvious that they used to volunteer their help. Yeah. Jennifer, can we, can we reach out to them on customer service? Yes, yes, I will. Okay, thank you. Any further public comments? Okay, did anybody say we could do this at public comments before we lose people? Um, congratulations to the class of 2020 uh, on their graduation. Uh, it certainly will be a year for them to remember as we certainly will remember it. Uh, and we wish them all the best in the future and their success. Um, I, we hope they have a, a good coming forth years in their college education or whatever path they choose. Thank you so much, uh, Joyce, and thank you to the entire town of Hadley for coming out on Friday the 29th and supporting our seniors. Thank you to Public Safety for making the parade such a success. We'll be distributing diplomas on June 12th and we'll be putting together a video keepsake with all the elements and more for our students and families of graduation and Happy Media is helping us out with that. So unusual um, and in many ways, in many ways disappointing because students have and understandably families have an expectation of what graduation should look like and what they're looking forward to. But the parade was wonderful. The town has really helped to make a difficult time much better for our students and their families. And as I said, the parade and the video, we're hoping that there are elements actually of, of this particular, for this particular class that are unique and special and make it stand apart in some positive ways as well. But thank you to the town of Hadley and public safety, Park and Rec, and so many other groups for um, helping make this time special for our seniors. Yes, absolutely. All right, I will, uh, if there's no further public comment, I'll come back to the consent agenda. Let's get the uh, Hadley holistic entrance location done since they're, they've been waiting for a while. Um, so this loads. So I know Lynn's here and Andy is here. Um, Andy, do you want to talk about why we're reviewing this basically uh i guess we're we're looking at getting a solid vote on an entrance location so we can figure out the host community agreement correct sir could you hear me yes we can hear okay yeah basically we just wanted to share our initial thoughts why we started working with the mall you know we thought we thought the location was uh very ideal centrally located um uh, accommodate all the traffic for both customers inside the facility as well as the parking. You know, all the basic stuff, zero traffic issues, zero parking problems, the build that will be done very cost effectively. Um, but the biggest thing is what we really wanted to do was uh, be, be in a mall where we can get a win-win situation for everybody including the mall. We were hoping that uh, as people walk through the mall, we can share customers and, and, uh, and possibly convert some of those customers to mall customers. I mean, malls these days have many challenges. And I, I just thought it was so ideal that uh, we kind of work together, place it in this location, uh, create more traffic for the location. Um, we have, we have a, Pretty well thought out presentation. Lynn's gonna Lynn's gonna deliver part of it. Uh, my colleague Matt's gonna deliver the rest of it. But we just basically wanted to share like our initial thoughts. I mean, at the end of the day, we want the location. We'll do what's necessary, but we want to make sure everybody's happy. And whatever whatever uh, whatever issues or concerns that we may have, hopefully we come up with some sort of compromise rather than build out a whole exterior and, and deviate from the concept of what Lynn and the mall want. But 
you know, that being said, I'll, I'll hand it over to Lynn and she can start this presentation off. And I'll be brief. I, I know we've been down this road a little bit. And for those that have not um, been part of the, the initial permitting process, um, I'll just remind everyone when we initially um, engaged with Hadley, we um, had all along thought interior entrance. The first time we discussed exterior was during the um, initial review. And we were appreciative of um, the opportunity and um, being able to move forward with these guys. Um, they're great partners. They've been very flexible. Um, so our rationale for the interior entrance uh, versus the exterior, um, there's roughly 20 feet of frontage um, on the inside as it currently sits today. We feel strongly that it poses um, less visibility um, to the public eye and those that um, frequent the shopping center. Um, with an exterior entrance, it would also be roughly about 20 feet of exterior frontage with an exterior sign and would provide a little bit more uh, visibility on Route 9, um, in, including frontage um, and then you know incoming parking fields. Um, we think that the interior entrance, the way that they've been working um, toward this can be very discreet, low profile, not draw attention to those that don't um, or shouldn't be entering the space. Um, we feel like we have a solid security plan. We have a solid uh, behavior code to reduce um, the level of congregating versus um, you know, an exterior presence um, at other locations throughout the Commonwealth where that security presence isn't there, um, you know, other than entering the, the building or the space, um, we do have monitoring 24 seven. Um, and we were strategic with identifying this location uh, with the proximity to tenants that would appeal to a more mature audience, um, including Planet Fitness, which is 18 and over for members, JC Penny catering to a more mature client um, and Nail Pro, which is largely women over 21. Um, so we really tried to be thoughtful in our, our process and, and staying away from the areas where minors are congregating for the entertainment uses in the center court area. You almost have to go looking for Nail Pro and um, the former GNC. Um, you know, that's not something we like to tout as a mall owner, but it is true. Um, but we really... We were thinking that um, as part of the compromise, because Matt, Andy, and I have been talking a lot about this, you know, maybe there's an opportunity for us to provide educational messaging throughout the center with digital directories and our assets, promoting awareness um, and, and anti-drug messaging. You know, there are definitely things that we can do to help, um, you know, offset any, any issues with uh, exposure to minors, if you will. Um, we also wanted to point out um, enclosed shopping centers definitely are, you know, going through some, a lot of changes, um, a lot of challenges with tenancy and, and trying to lease up spaces. So we're trying to ensure that all of the tenants in the mall um, are benefiting from a, a symbiotic uh, traffic flow um, with, you know, similar tenants throughout the center um, in order for them to be successful. Um, we have had challenges with PetSmart and their design. Um, we were working toward a merchandising plan that facilitates a larger format retailer on the end of the mall. So PetSmart ended up being designed with only an exterior entrance and customers and employees have complained about that, um, that setup because it poses challenges for those shoppers who are tightening up the timelines for their visits. And if they want to visit more than one or two locations, it's, it's you know, increasing their shopping time, which um, for them is, is not beneficial. Um, finally, you know, like I said, we're, we're trying to convert to what the, um, the audience wants, what customers are looking for. We feel like this is a good fit. Um, for our center, it, it broadens our, our merchandise mix. And um, I know Matt has some things about other centers, um, enclosed and not enclosed, indoor and outdoor, um, that share similar tenant setups. Um, so I don't know, Matt, if you wanted to touch yeah. on that. I know, you know we had sent you guys out the information showing some of those and just wanted to you know, reiterate that there are dis dispensaries open throughout the state of Massachusetts that are in indoor and you know outdoor shopping centers that have a lot of uh, family attractions, such as, you know, one being close to East Hampton Insa. You got the escape rooms, you got table tennis in the same building with it with Insa, um, the park, uh, restaurant, you have mi indoor miniature golf and 
uh, arcade along with the circus studio for children, all in the same building, in the same structures. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, kind of reiterate that, that it's already out there and functioning nicely without any issues. And the only um, other thing that we wanted to point out, it's not obviously a deal breaker for us, but it does pose challenges for us from a cost perspective. Um, if we're to flip um, the, the inside mall entrance as it sits today, as Andy pointed out earlier, as we were structuring our deal initially, the cost for him to build out was, was um, lower um, because the infrastructure is already there. If we're to flip it with an exterior entrance, we need to build a vestibule, we need to cut through the iron and the cast on um, the building. And um, we've done some estimates and it looks like it's gonna include an additional $100,000 in construction costs, which would A, you know, obviously add to the, the, the project cost, but also B, make it more challenging in terms of um, trying to open um, and expedite the, the opening for them. Um, so that added cost definitely can pose some, some challenges in the state of affairs that we're currently undergoing. You know, I'm sure it's not news to everyone, you know, um, COVID and the closure has caused us some serious cash flow issues, um, rent payments are not coming in, and it could definitely be a hardship for both the landlord and the, uh, the tenant. So, you know, in, in closing, because like I said, I didn't want to take up too much time. I didn't want to, you know, beat a dead horse on this, but I do appreciate the opportunity for us to appeal to you about this. We, you know, we're all about supporting new businesses. We want to evolve with the ever-changing climate of our shopping center industry, but we definitely want to make sure that all parties involved, obviously the town, our partnership with the town, we appreciate it. Um, and us as a landlord in our new business, we want to make sure that everybody is um, set up for success here. I, add, I, I really think with some awareness, making the youth more aware, if that's the concern, congregation and kind of the presence of it. I, I think if we tackle it head on and make people more aware and educate them, I think everybody's concerns can be addressed. All right, so any uh, select board comments um, to start off? Well, we, I had sent you a text that I had asked uh, uh, Chief Mason if he had any concerns about it. I see now that uh, Chief uh, Spankenabel has joined us also. Uh, I'd like to have his, his input on it also, on the, uh, how they feel for the safety. Um, Chief Mason's concern is to make sure that uh, there was somebody there at the entrance and making sure that, uh, and in that area, that security is going to be fairly tight around there, that you're not going to have uh, younger people under age uh, loitering around this establishment. Um, doesn't have a problem with the indoor, and if it, if there is a problem with, with the uh, um, how you're going to handle people coming in and going out and keeping the age uh, appropriate. Um, that was a concern of his. And I didn't know if Mike uh, Spankenable had any concerns. I saw that he had uh, joined us. Chief, did you have anything to... I, was, I, I hear what they're saying. And from a business perspective, I think that we should let... Can we do a provisional sort of thing where... If we see a problem happening after six months, we can say, okay, we talked about this. We said, if it's not working for us in six months then you do the other, but let them go with their original plan, especially now in the time place we are with COVID. Let them not have to spend an extra $100,000 and get started sooner. That would also be to our benefit, of course. What did Chief Spankenable have anything to say? Uh, I'm assuming we're talking about restaurants. Is that correct? No, we're no. talking about the pot shop. At the mall. Pot shop. Oh. Uh, <laughs> on the fire department side, we've, we've done our inspections. So I'm not sure what else you were looking for, if there was something new there. It, was just, the, it, was, it was just the entrance and uh, flow of traffic and making sure that underage people were not going to be allowed around loitering in that area. And we're, we're talking about the one at the mall, 
chief, not the one uh, on Route 9. Yeah, I have not received any information on the mall shop at this point. So they're, they have some work to do if they've, if they've started operations or have started build out, they'll need to get caught up with the fire department. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, from my perspective, I, I definitely see the cost issue and I get it, everybody's struggling. Um, but at the same time, uh, based on the feedback I'm getting from from parents and, and uh, other people in town, uh, first off, they don't even want to see it in the mall at all. Um, so, you know, it's, um, it, I, I think they realize they don't have a choice. Um, you know, the, the, the law is the law. These, these places exist. So, um, but they definitely don't want to see a, an interior entrance when their kids are doing other things there at pins or the movies or, or interskate or whatever. Um, they just feel that it makes it easier for the kids to transition around and hang around in that area. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm still very much in favor of the exterior entrance. Exactly. You know, just as I said before, you know, the mall strived for no smoking on their property. Uh, the, the more children friendly with uh, movie theaters and the go-karts and all of that. And uh, it just, the mall was not the place for it to begin with, in my opinion, but the board voted for it. So the exterior entrance, if there's a problem with the interior entrance, it'll already be there and they can switch and go with the external entrance. Do they have, uh, you so know, Johnny you're going to run this part. You got to run this by the fire too, because do they have a fire exit? Uh, they're going to need a fire exit out the front anyway. Does it exist now? Yeah, the the way the space is configured now is um, it's for interior, you know, presence. Um, there is a fire exit in the rear. It was occupied by several tenants over the years. the The most recent long term tenant was GNC. They vacated. And we have had um, fire inspections for subsequent temporary tenants uh, to ensure that um, the way that it's configured today is safe. We have not submitted plans as of yet because obviously we've been going through the approval process for the configuration. Uh, once we get to that point, we will obviously work very closely with all the parties, building inspector and fire inspector, to review the format, um, whether it's interior or exterior. My suggestion is, is that you have an entrance and an exit and it can't be the same door. So that's, that's what I would like to see is that you cannot use the same door to go in and out. Um, even if it was an outside door, then if they wanted to exit inside the mall, um, that would be an, uh, you know, uh, another thing, but you, you certainly, I have to, you have to have an egress. You have to have two egresses uh, to go out of any uh, facility or any board. Is that not correct, Mike? Spank and Abel, are you still there? No, he left. But that to me, I think is, is, is really important that you have an entrance and an egress. Well, all the malls, all the malls were built because I worked on that mall in HVAC when they built it, and they all each unit, each store has an exit which would be the fire door. It's yeah. not for public use. It's not lined up that way. But I'm sure that with some some figuring, it could be used so that people would enter from the mall and exit through the exterior door if that's what the board really thinks would make a difference. Can you hear me and now? that wouldn't cost nearly as much. Is there an exterior door to the facility as it is right now? Is there an exterior door for an egress? There is an egress for the exterior door. It's their back, um, you know, back area where the fire panel is, where the electric panel is. Mike, I think you've been um, through that space a few times over the years. I've been I there once when it was changed to... GNC and yep. there is an egress door there but there would need to be some obviously some reconfiguring because it was an exit that was pretty much it's listed from the store but there we should really um Tommy Quinlan would have a better idea but there are there are exceptions for multiple exits out of a space depending on 
occupancy and how many folks are, uh, you know, what the approval is for the number of people in it. Um, obviously you have two exits there, the one from the mall, but that doesn't, you don't want, if you can eliminate exiting people from one hazard area to another, that's the, that's the preferred method. With the way that store is set up, it's set up so that it's attached directly to the mall hallway. So the occupancy number is lower. That's why um, that second exit was pretty much an exit for, you know, staff working in the back. Um, I don't remember if there's a stairway up to a second. second yep, there is. There. You're remembering correctly. There is a mezzanine up there. Right. So that was um, that wasn't the primary exit for that space. It was a uh, basically it's it's a uh, one of the spaces you actually have that exits to you know directly to the outside. The design for our store calls for two separate and a separate entrance and a separate exit. Uh, that's that's not an issue. That's actually, I think, the Cannabis Control Commission. It's a regulation that, that we need to abide by. I mean, that that that's a possible compromise we're talking about right now. Where, you know, if we needed to, we could probably have them go out a different door even. But um, currently, that is, I, I just that want is, to yeah, that is certainly most preferable. I don't want them using the same door, whether coming in or out. So the egress door is on the outside, correct, already? Well, it is, but the way the way our initial design, there's, I don't know if you guys had a chance to look at the presentation of the layout. Yeah. Yep. So the way it shows out of the 20 footage, 20 feet of frontage, there's a door, I believe, on the right side of the facility where they enter and then the door on the left side where they exit. But that that's our initial proposal. So there are two separate entrances. There is always security present during all business hours. So somebody will always be stationed up front, checking IDs and so forth. That's one of the requirements we need to abide by as well. And, and the other concern was that we wanted mall security to be sure that there were no, no underage people loitering in that area. When we discussed this with Lynn and Lynn assured us that wouldn't be a problem as well, we actually talked about keeping traffic going. If there was any congregation happening, we would make people move along. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, at the other end of the mall, there's a reason for them to congregate. They might be at the movie theater. They might, they, they might have to, just, it's just the nature of the business. Right. This, this, there's no reason to congregate. We want to keep people moving. We would have no issues moving people along. As a matter of fact, I, I asked Lynn if she could remove that bench that was out in front so people can't even sit there. And mm -hmm. she was happy to, to do that as well. But, you know, like I said, we, we are willing to do what we, what's necessary. You know, falling short, you know, if we, if we have to, we will. But it's a huge expense. And it, it takes, it, it'll definitely increase the timeline and just make the level of the difficulty that much more to do that. Um, the layout we have right now ensures really good traffic flow through the facility. Um, you know, we, we'd have to see, you know, how, how, we, how it would be done. We'd have to just basically re, redo the whole thing. But um, I, do. Yeah, I like the idea, if there's a problem, we'll address it. We, we uh, want to make sure everybody's happy. Yeah, not to interrupt, I just want to speak on the behalf real quick of having the interior entrance. I just see the advantage of, for this store, there being an entrance on the interior of the mall because I think they can do a lot with texting and different things so there's not a line that forms outside the door in the mall. And I see outside the mall being an area where people will congregate because it's not necessarily a secure area. It's outside the mall. This is right across the way from a mall security station. So it would always be supervised. Mall security would be right there in the event that anything did happen. And I do see a lot of the advantages of it being there. But I also get what other people's concerns are. So... I do want to just make a motion real quick, not necessarily to get any approval one way or another, but more of a straw poll, I guess, on the board to see if we are presented with an 
would the board be in favor of an interior entrance to this store um, at the mall? And I'd just like to make that motion uh, so we can get a clear vote from the board right now and then kind of move on. Well, I mean, do you just want to take a, a straw poll rather than do a motion that way we're not? Yeah, I don't know how to word it. Um, I guess we could do a, a formal straw poll, but maybe not necessarily a vote. David Nixon, I don't know if you can give me any guidance on what we should do. <laughs> All right, so if you make a motion and if there's a second, you got to hold a vote. Um, but if you just ask people to say there's position, uh, I think that gets to you to where you want to be. Yeah, and I guess what I want to do is be able to negotiate the host community agreement with, with Hadleaf and have a clear direction from the board what we need to do. So that's what the motivation is here, not necessarily trying to hold anybody down, but if we're going to be negotiating the host community agreement, they need to know where they have to put the entrance to their facility. And, uh, you know, there's consequences if the board uh, isn't in favor of the interior entrance that they then have to um, look into. So that's all. So uh, do you want to make a motion and take a formal vote and just be done with this? Because uh, I know that's what they were kind of looking for. I think is you know a, a solid yes or no, so that way the the agreement can be negotiated. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Let's just I'll just make a motion to for the board to consider a host community agreement with an interior entrance to their facility. I'll second. And that does not tie them the host community agreement to that, but just that we would be looking at a host community agreement with that being okay. Okay, motion and second. Any further discussion? So if if we were to vote yes on this, is there an egress to some other outside? I want two separate entrance and exits. Um, is that included in this motion? Because I don't want to have it opening up the egress back out into the mall. So if they're going to egress into the building, I want to I mean, if they're going to go into the building, I want them to egress out. I don't want them to come back, come back into the mall at that point after they've done a purchase. So, Is, uh, Lynn, you can maybe chime in on this, but what's shown in the picture is uh, uh, obviously they're displaying an interior entrance with two doors that go in and out on the interior of the mall. And the back door, I assume, is kind of for deliveries and for an emergency exit only, not for customers to go in or out of. Is that what you're aiming that, for? Yep. The initial um, designs that we started working through, and maybe Matt can speak a little bit more articulately about this, but that was the initial plan. But we are certainly open to utilizing that exterior door and reconfiguring. It sounds like um, Mike might want us to, to consider that anyway. Um, so when we go through the design process, we can figure out a way to escort people through the exterior door that exists today. I, I mean, I don't wanna speak out of turn for Andy or, or Matt. I know it's their, their design and their flow plan. Um, and I'm sure that the Cannabis Commission will weigh in as well um, because there's a lot of protocols on their end too. Mm -hmm. That would certainly make me a lot happier if I was to have an interior door and I know that there's an exterior door already there. So um, I would prefer that they go out after mm -hmm. their purchase rather we than with that if that's coming the direction in. We have to go. Instead of them coming in from the outside, and then they would still be allowed to uh, go out into the mall after their purchase. So I think if we changed our thinking and they're allowed to go into the store in the mall and then exit outside. I think that would um, make some people, and it certainly would make me feel a little bit better, but I certainly would also like uh, Chief Spank and able to chime in on that and have a look at the plans. Any thoughts? Yeah, Mike, had, Mike had said that that hallway uh, goes up, it, their back door empties into a hallway. 
Is that the main hallway at the mall or is that no. one of the rear hallways for exiting? No, um, the, the back the door on the exterior of the building exits to the to a sidewalk where um if you if, if anybody remembers ground round, that patio that was out there, yeah, that's yeah. where the back door is currently uh situated is um right next door to where ground rounds um patio was. Okay. Okay, so it does go directly to the outside then. Correct. I think to me that would be a better plan. Do you, John? Yeah, you know, and, and that was the whole idea between if, if we had problems, it, it would be much easier for us to decide if they had problems on the inside and they had that exit or that egress or whatever you want to call it on the outside, then they could switch in and at some point use that as their front door. If they ran into the problem, some type of problem inside the mall. So, I, Christian, do you want to revise your motion? Yeah, I can just change it to be a motion to have an interior entrance from the mall, but an exterior exit from the, the facility or the store. I will second that also. Doesn't this cause, based on the arguments they're making of uh, $100,000 in additional costs and whatever else in order to have the exterior entrance, wouldn't this result in the same costs that they say are a barrier to their success? If the exterior, not because, no, I'm sorry, Jane. Probably not because you're not making a fancy entrance. You're Correct. not putting the store name out there. You're not making it attractive for people to come to. This is the egress. Go away. <laughs> you don't need you don't need a facade or signs or anything. Or Correct. a canopy even. Correct. And that, that exterior door becoming simply an egress, we would just have to replace the door versus building a vestibule and a, um, you know, cutting into the concrete and the steel to accommodate for said um, vestibule and storefront. It's creating a whole new storefront if it becomes the entry point. It would, you know, leaving the facility is not necessarily the, the point of entry that you're trying to make, you know, um, pretty, if you will, um, you're, you're at that point leaving the facility so that it doesn't need to be marked. It doesn't need to be, um, you know, attractive in any way. If we were to make that exterior door and have to create a new storefront and a facade, that is where the challenges and the costs um, would start to, to fare in. There will be additional costs, but it won't be near the hundred thousand dollars that we are, you know, accounting for if we were to just do an exterior only. I think one of the other issues that parents may be concerned about is that people would not then be in the mall with their product; they would be outside the mall after they have shopped. And I and I do and I do want it somewhere in that contract that the mall will step up their security when they have this facility in place. Even though we're egressing them to the outside, we wanna make sure that they're not re-entering the facility at some point um, and panhandling their, I mean, I, you know what I mean? I mean, you don't know people, you don't know what goes on in their mind. Uh, young people are a target. I just wanna make sure that the mall security will be on top of this um, and I, and I, I think um, part of that also would be, Jane, you had mentioned uh, after the facility opens that we uh, relook at this in six months and see how this is going on. If you want to lessen that to three months and do increments um, just to see uh, how things are going, I think we should certainly stay on top of this. Uh, the only thing to think about for those three months, uh, you know, review is my understanding is the Cannabis Control Commission is very particular on their inspections of entrance and exits and building setup and security and all that kind of stuff. Whereas, mm -hmm. if, if we but, want to tell but them, we are, but as a town, we are in control of their license, David. No, I understand that. But if we correct make a change, they're basically going to be shut down for probably six months or so while they make the changes and the, the cannabis control redoes their inspection process. So it's just something to think about. Yeah. The, yeah. the other thing I've noticed 
is when that first place opened in Northampton, they had huge uh, paid patrol presence because of the crowds not trying to sell their stuff, just trying to get it for their own use. They still, eight, nine months later, are having huge presence of paid faculty, of paid police forces to be there taking care of things. The traffic is nearly yeah, as bad. But if you go to the one in Amherst or something like that, it's not nearly the same. I mean, the, it's like, uh, that's comparing the first one that's legal on the East Coast to, you know, the mob. I don't know. It, it's hard to, I don't think we should base our comparison. No, the one in Northampton. On the one the in one Northampton. In, yeah, the one in Northampton is easy on, easy off 91. So that's why well, they're we're, getting. We're easy on, easy off Route 9. And some well, of the others in Amherst are not. This is a convenient location, which is an advantage. And if the store is doing well, they will be able to pay for more police presence. Well, that would we be up it. to them. And that would be up to us and the police and the fire when they approve the plans. So, yeah. and, and the mall, yeah. And the mall. So we will all chime in on it together. So right, I so think we've been motion. putting in place the three to six months uh, reviewing the process and the operation. I think that would be a, a good thing for us. All right, so the motion is for an interior entrance and an exterior exit, correct, Christian? Correct. All right, so any further discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 No. No. Okay, so that passed, right? That's three S's? Yeah, three, three, yes. three, three yes. one to four. All right, I didn't hear them all, sorry. <laughs> three to two. Okay, so thanks uh, Lynn and thanks Andy for uh, coming in. Thank you guys for your time, we appreciate it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on to back to the consent agenda and get that out of the way. We have warrants PR2024, AP2045, AP2045S, AP2046, and AP2046S. DPW appointment uh, for wastewater and mechanic position to Peter Clow. Uh, Human Resources Director, Military Leave of Absence for Ed O'Connor. And COVID-19 Town Building Safety Plan, uh, just for select board approval. So moved. Second. All right, all those in favor? Hi. Hang on. What what's the uh, plan for the buildings? So I can and definitely get recap that for you, John, if you'd like. Um, basically, what, it's just a. a you sorry, go ahead, David. I just talk about it now. Uh, what's that, David? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. Uh, go ahead. Okay. So essentially, um, you know, it allows. Uh, the select board to adopt a policy saying anybody using um, town property under the purview of, of the select board will adhere to the requirements of either the executive order or as we, we uh, phase into uh, reopening, um, each department will adhere, adhere to a particular industry. And it brings everybody to one place for information. So for example, the DPW essentially falls into four industry standards. You have construction for your highway division. You have laboratory standards for your water treatment and wastewater facility. You have um, <clears throat> uh, office standards for your administrative buildings and then um, manufacturing standards for your maintenance facility because it's very similar to a manufacturing environment. Um, each standard you know, has its own um, uh, occupancy limits or perhaps sanitizing requirements and in order to run properly every employer has to adhere to those requirements. Uh, public safety doesn't have an applicable industry so at a minimum they would be required to do what they're already doing which is the social distancing, face coverings when not practical, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, And then the policy is also designed that as we move forward the town moves forward um, and if the Commonwealth were to regress into a previous phase, the town would also regress into a previous phase. So it, it allows the town to be flexible 
It acknowledges the Board is, of Health is the enforcement authority, and we don't have to do a new policy every time there's a new phase. Everything we're doing now, and we're under mandate by DEP and EPA in the water and the wastewater. Sure. So there's a lot. Yeah, it just it basically it just brings everything into one location, one policy. We're going to follow the state's protocol, no more, no less, and uh, clarifies things for, for a lot of folks that have a lot of questions. And this plan needs to be filed with the Board of Health. So we're just asking for your okay to uh, send it to the Board of Health for their review. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so moving on, um, let's go to COVID-19 update, reopening, and grant applications. Um, Have a good night, everybody. You too. Um, all right, so the select board review the Hadley, town of Hadley's response plan and uh, the unified command team still exists, but uh, we're only meeting on an as needed basis going forward. Um, and then the select board will review applications for an economic development under the C CBBG uh, CV program and the CARES Act. And uh, we'll also discuss how to uh, support businesses and community health as the Commonwealth reopens. David, do you want to start off this discussion? Sure. Uh, and if we could uh, take a quick look at uh, 8.1 in your agenda. Um, the, there's further information having to do with the Executive Order 35, which outlines a uh, comprehensive plan for getting businesses that fall within the category of phase two. This would be our restaurants, hotels, and a whole slew of other um, uh, businesses, including sports. It uh, outlines a plan for them to bring their workers only back to the workplace in order to prepare for customer service uh, at a later date, which has not been announced by the governor yet. Uh, so if we could combine these two items, they're all of a piece. Um, and Jennifer has been working very hard on getting the town uh, to be coordinated with respect to reopening uh, issues having to do with restaurants, having to do with hotels, having to do with all the other uh, industries that fall within the phase two uh, requirements. Uh, there are two grant programs out there, the Community Development Block Grant Program, CV. Um, and this is a uh, program to bring uh, up to $400,000 to the town of Hadley to be distributed as micro uh, loans or loans to micro businesses. Um, that's businesses of five or fewer employees. One employee has to be the owner and that owner has to fit within moderate to low income uh, guidelines. Uh, this is the, uh, we are piggybacking on the town of East Hampton who will be the lead community in a regional application. And the um, uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission will do all the administrative work in distributing these monies and running this program. So that's the first grant program. This is the CARES Act which is federal money and there's a $471,000 designated for the town of Hadley uh, under this program. This is to make up for losses that we have, uh, may incur having to do with additional expenses associated with uh, dealing with the coronavirus. Unfortunately, it does not um, apply right now, but there's some talk about this in Washington does not apply right now to making up for lost uh, revenues because of the impact of the coronavirus. So if they change that, uh, that uh, provision of that uh, CARES Act to cover the lost revenues, that'll go a long way towards bringing uh, additional monies to the town of Hadley. Um, the fire chief and I have been talking about this particular program. Um, and it does not appear that we need to act on it now because we're gonna be okay for FY20, but we think that we should defer action on this program until FY21 in order to cover costs that'll uh, come to the town 
uh, prior to December 31st, 2020. Um, so those are the two grant programs. If we could have a green light to move forward on both of them. I think you've already approved them, but it's always good to get additional approvals after we've learned more information. And then Jennifer, do you want to talk a little bit about where we are with respect to getting the word out to the businesses about uh, how we're going to help them get around all the regulations at the local level to get them to prepared for reopening? Hey, Jennifer, can we, uh, can I just get a motion on the grants real quick before we move on? Because I think this is going to take a little time to go through the, the, this reopening part of the thing. So moved. Second. Second. Yeah. All right. All those in favor. Um, Aye. This is the consent agenda. Aye. This is uh, for item 6.1 for the uh, oh, okay. COVID-19 grants. So we're still in the consent agenda right now? No. <laughs> uh, I don't think we voted on a consent agenda. Yes, we did. You did. No, no. John cut in on it there for something. All right. Well, I just, I, I want to, I, you didn't get my vote because I was muted anyway, but uh, a no. vote on a consent agenda except for DPW. Okay. For the new hire. Okay. I just want to make that clear. Yep. Okay. So uh, staying yeah. on that. Okay. All right. Now, where are we? Go ahead. 6.1 COVID 19 <laughs> yes. applications. So, sure. right now, we have a motion to allow David to work on uh, CDBG grants under the CARES Act. And what was the other uh, grant, David? The um, Community Development Block Grant CV and the CARES Act. Okay. So, those two, that's what we're giving him the, uh, the authority to work on. Okay. So moved. All right, and we had a second. second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, and then uh, now let's go on to the reopening plan. Uh, Jennifer, I'll let you go with this. I know you've been working hard on it. I, I have, and, and, and all of our departments have, and it's been really a, a great effort by everybody, building, fire, board of health. Everybody's just jumped right in. Um, we've turned this around really quickly. If you look at the attachments, you'll see um, the Board of Health's orders. They have an application that they're requesting. Uh, the fire station or the fire department and the building inspector have combined their requirements to make it easier for our businesses because that's what we're looking for. Um, and so they have their regulations all listed. And then there is an outdoor scene alcohol um, application as well because the ABCC has granted you, the select board, as a local licensing authority, the right to expedite applications on a temporary basis till November 1st or the rescinding of the uh, order number 35, uh, whichever comes first, but they allow you to process the outdoor seating areas. So that means, and I'm just gonna use for example, um, me, Tierra, if they would like to create an outdoor seating space in their parking lot, this will allow them to submit the application to you, the select board, and for us to vote on it and for them to create an outdoor space for this time only during the pandemic. And when, and when the order expires, the outdoor seating space goes away. This is not a moment to expand and stay expanded. It's a temporary, a temporary allowance just to help businesses get reopened in a safe manner. Um, so with that being said, we're going to need to process a lot of liquor licenses fairly quickly. So I've also included on there an authorization for the select board to sign. I'd like to ask you to vote to delegate the authority to allow David Nixon to act on your behalf to approve the liquor licenses. Um, there will be steps where fire police, building inspector, and myself will all review them before they go to David for approval. But 
We want to make sure that we can get our businesses back open safely and as easily as possible. Um, I think that's it. Are there any questions? Nope. So moved. Oh, oh, thank you so much, David. I'd also like to ask you to waive any fees for inspections that may um, be incurred by businesses during this time. Um, just because I think asking a business that's not been able to operate in a couple in the last couple of months to pay a fee for something might not be the best choice. And I know that that you the select board are very pro business and that you want to support them. So I'm asking you to waive um, inspection fees at this time. So are the, ins are the inspection fees for uh, things in proportion to this new development of opening? Or are they long time things like the annual inspection of restaurants? No. no. I'm talking about the change of, we implemented okay. a change of license fee for, for liquor license, it's $100. We, I don't recommend that you enforce that right now. Um, there'd also be inspections of tents. And I think that we perhaps would waive that too. Um, and any other inspection related to COVID-19 and the reopening only. Okay, thank you for the clarification. So I had made a motion to waive the fees. Second. Second. Still second it. Okay. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor of waiving the fees for anything COVID-19 related? Aye. 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 And, we're, and the application process, correct? Correct. Yeah. That was included yeah. with David Nixon being able to sign okay. off on it. Yep. Okay. Great. And I will say that the Board of Health has waived their fees as well. So the, the town of Hadley is not charging any fees. None of our boards are charging fees for the reopening for our businesses. I noticed, uh, Jennifer, that up in Salisbury that some of the restaurants uh, put up outside tents. Is that what we're allowing them also to do with inspections? Yes. Okay. But, but, as, but even though we're waiving the fees, we're not waiving the inspections. Safety comes first here. Correct. And the building inspector must inspect your tent. Um, and, and the application and everything is going to go live tomorrow morning um, on www.hadleyma.org slash reopening. <laughs> um, right. It'll all be there. It'll be a one-stop shop. And uh, businesses can just click through, fill out everything, and get it submitted to us. And we'll start processing it so that when the governor opens up for phase two, the town of Hadley will be ready for business. Great. Thank you, Jennifer. I know you've put a lot of work into this and making it all in one place is really useful for the businesses. I have, and I, I thank you for acknowledging that, but also, I mean, uh, planning board, fire department, board of health, and the building inspector's office um, have all just stepped up and just jumped so quickly and, and, I'm really happy that I work with them. Because that's why we live in Hadley, isn't it? <laughs> wow, almost. <laughs> well, I work there, but yes. <laughs> You're close. You're close. <laughs> a great group of people to work with, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, Jennifer. You. All right. All right. So we'll move on. Uh, Chris, are you here for the sewer abatement? Is that why you're hanging out? Or, or you just want to spend some time with us? Uh, you're muted. All right, well, let's do that anyways. Uh, let's do the sewer abatement for Golden Court. Uh, let's see, broken pipe between two of their buildings. Broken pipe has been repaired. DPW has been has reviewed and approved the abatement request in the amount of $851.56. And uh, does, let's see, the collector, I'm waiting for this to download. I'm assuming the collector approved of, of this as well. The collector doesn't approve. She provides information. Okay. She's here. She could have spoke for herself. I'm sorry, but that's the normal line. Okay. Perfect. So. So I just wanted to just uh, be clear on uh, who oversees the buildings and the property at the Golden Court. 
That would be the Amherst Housing Authority oversees that property. Okay, so would this be uh, part of their purview or is it under state or uh, does it actually come out of our coffers? So who, who's actually paying for all this? This is uh, our sewer system. So because the leak is at the sewer. Um, so it's, it's, okay, it's at the connection that we would require us. Yeah. Okay. I'll make a does motion. That make, does that make us liable for the damage it caused in the basements over there? No. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept the uh, rebate. It's actually a water pipe. It wasn't a sewer pipe, David. And it was between two buildings. Is that that's state property, obviously? It is. That's why I was asking, John. Yeah. And the only thing that we are abating is the sewer on this. Uh, Not the water it, loss? No, because it didn't, it, the water went through the meter, but the okay. sewer clearly did not. Okay. okay. That makes sense. Okay, so we have a motion and Christian seconded it. Uh, any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Okay. All right. Let's do a town administrator search update. Okay, just a couple of updates. Uh, it says 39 resumes uh, on your uh, handout there. It, uh, it's actually up to 49 at this point. Um, the application process is closed. Screening committee, you formed it, but not appoint, you did not appoint people to that screening committee. You have two letters of uh, interest to be appointed that uh, would be Jane Nevin Smith submitted a letter of interest um, to represent the select board. And there are two positions for the select board. Paul McCretzky has submitted an uh, letter of interest to represent the public. Uh, I talked to the school superintendent. She is interested in being willing to serve uh, and uh, both the fire chief and the police chief said if you want to choose one of them that would be okay, okay. Uh, i'd also be willing to serve on that panel uh for the second select board position if no one wanted to do that well that's it you got five right there right now then right well i just wanted to see if you know christian or joyce or you wanted to do it as well so i had said so and then i had seen on the uh web that um, a couple of them. I wasn't sure what the availability is or what your time frame was that you would be doing the interviews. Um, I do have one of those Thursdays off, but I'm not sure that that is sufficient enough to uh, carry through this process. So you had only picked uh, two dates or they had only picked two dates of when you would go through the process. Um, to choose and then it would come before the select board on, on, on the third date. Did you see that there on? Yeah, it's, look, it's looking like uh, June 24th and 25th for interviews. Mm -hmm. So if you were gonna have the interviews during the day that would uh, eliminate me. Okay. And I don't wanna tie anybody up. I, you know, I was on the select selection committee when I hired David and I can't be more proud than that. So, you know, maybe it's time for somebody else to take the next drain and see who you all choose. That would be okay. But we'll have the final say, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. And then Christian, did you have any interest in this? Before? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in it, but I'm more than happy to let you do it if you're interested in doing it. And, you know, if you need like an alternate or something along those lines, I'd be happy to serve as an alternate. Um, so yeah, if you'd like to do it, that's fine with me. Okay. I recommend that we, um, pick the fire, the police chief instead of the fire chief. Cause I know the fire chief is really busy with inspections at this point. And it would give him two days to breathe. If not. More. Probably a very good idea. <laughs> we could, we could have Mike and Mike arm wrestle to see which one wins. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> he, he might not even be on there listening to me. 
<laughs> oh, hold on. I, I am actually on and seeing how I'm on, I think I should probably be done. <laughs> uh, it, it would be a close race, I'm sure. So um, I'm happy to be if Mike wants to as well. Maybe we can both do it. Why don't you two decide which ones I, I would think I'm perfectly happy with either one of you. I'm, you know, you know that for sure. So um time availability do you do you and mike want to talk it out and see you could be alternates actually the which would be good yeah i think i like your arm wrestling idea i think i could take them um <laughs> <laughs> tell me fine. about that tomorrow it. Can, <laughs> can we make it a fundraiser yeah hey, good idea help the <laughs> town budget absolutely there you go. <laughs> So I make a motion that we, we need more people from the public, right? No, you the only pos, uh, created one. Pos, you can have as many as you wish, but last time you met, you said one member of the public. So do we have enough people now for this committee? Plenty. Yes. Paul McCretzky, you, David, Phil, and uh, Ann McKenzie, and uh, either the police or fire chief. I make a motion that we accept that. Along with Christian as an alternate. I'll, I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So looks like last on the list here is, uh, well, second to last, uh, is uh, library, fire station, and senior center updates. Let's start with, uh, uh, Jim, how about the senior center? Senior center has a temporary uh, occupancy permit so the staff is in there getting organized and it's a good thing we have more time because there's so many new pieces of technology we're learning or trying to learn especially for seniors it's a little overwhelming but the building is beautiful and we're going to have temporary until the library has given us access from Route 47 that is the building inspector's requirement and the senior center is totally in agreement with that because we don't want seniors driving on Route 9, turning and entering. So is, is everything out of the uh, Most Holy Redeemer? Yes, we're out. We stopped paying rent at the end of the month. Perfect. Okay. Uh, how about the library? Christian, are you, do you have any update on the library? Um, I wish I had more. I don't have much. I know there were some change orders that the... Um, the building committee processed, but they were all under the $10,000 limit um, a few weeks ago. And I, again, I don't know the specifics on that. Um, I wish I could give that right now, but I know it's making good progress. Bricks are up. They're starting to do drywall on the inside. I mean, it looks good from the outside, but uh, that's about all I have. And then fire station. The fire station, um, there are, which I think Jennifer was going to bring to your attention, we need 14 of the 17 PCOs signed, please. And then they'll be sent to Phil so that they can uh, get things paid out. But we had already voted on those. So, um, David, I think we need some signatures from you. Uh, substantial completion will be June 15th with final completion on July 13th. Uh, so we are basically right on track. Uh, we have a contingency budget of a little bit, uh, it'll be about two, $200,000, $231,000 uh, left in the contingency after everything is said and done, because of course we did the fiber optic uh, so that the whole town would be able to uh, benefit from that, but we have um, exterior, interior, painting, everything is uh, moving right along. So we too will sh should be done by, like I said, the really middle of June, but totally completed by uh, July 13th. All right, excellent. Um, yes, I will sign those change orders. Jennifer and I will meet up and sign those tomorrow, I think. Sounds good. Um, all right, last on the list, I believe it's the report. David, do you want to hit anything in that that we didn't cover? Um, 
We didn't. Uh, there's no need. We covered everything in the, my report. Uh, if we could look, take a look at item 6.2, uh, we don't have any uh, transfers, but we do need to set the last warrant for FY. 2020, and that would be July 15th, if, if you would be so kind. Uh, is there any attachments in there? No, um, we, we, didn't, we didn't have enough time to put together the line to line transfers. So we'll do that at your next meeting, but we do need to like, get the word out to the department heads that the uh, last warrant is July 15th. All right, can I get a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. Okay. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any uh, announcements for this evening? Nope, we did the seniors. All right. I can just say, you know, congratulations to all the kids uh, graduating from sixth grade. I know I picked up my son's uh, stuff from school today and it was rather anticlimactic. I felt bad for him because normally there's a big uh, kickball game and uh, big, you know, party getaway, all those kinds of things. And uh, it was anticlimactic to pick up his books, not see any of his friends and just say goodbye to his teachers. So I thank everybody at the schools for all their hard work, but, and, and uh, congratulate all those kids for moving on from sixth grade. And let's let's all hope that next year is going to be a lot better for everybody. All right. So our next meeting is the seventeenth at uh, five thirty, and then we also have uh, the public forum, which is now the tenth at seven p.m., which will be via Zoom. And if I could get a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Good night.